Good evening. I'd like to call the meeting to order. I would like to ask Mayor Tran to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mary did a great job. That brings us to 2.3, approval of agenda. Are there any proposed changes? Items to be pulled? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move. Second. It's been moved and I have a second, please vote. One second, please, Mr. President. Ms. Chavez? Aye. Ms. Nunez? Aye. I mean, sorry, Mr. Nunez, sorry about that. And Ms. Rosenblum? Aye. Can you do a verbal vote, please? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passed. Uh, section three, special presentations. During tonight's special presentations portion of the meeting, we will receive an award by the California Department of Education Advisory Commission on Special Education and hear a performance by our San Bernardino City Unified School District Elementary honor choir. Before we continue with our special presentations, I'd like to take a moment to turn the floor over to our communication staff at this time. Good evening and thank you, President Tillman. My name is Mary Rowan Goodwin <clears throat> and I am the Director of Communications and Community Relations. Before I introduce our presentations, I'd like to invite, invite our board members uh, to take their seats along with our superintendent and our executive cabinet to our first row here. In just a few moments, the SBCUSD Elementary Honor Choir, under the direction of music teacher Takura McCullough, Mary Tartalone, and Larry Frost, will showcase their talents with a musical rendition of the song Bright by John Jacobson and Roger Emerson that is sure to warm our hearts and gently remind us of our why. Elementary Honor Choir, would you please make your way forward by using the ramp to my left? <clears throat> and while they settle into their places, please note that our Elementary Honor Choir consists of 75 total students in the grades four through the sixth grade, representing elementary schools all across the district. Once the choir brings their musical selection to a close this evening, they will remain in their places as our board members and superintendent make their way forward for a photo opportunity. Audience, please join me in a round of applause for our SBCUSD Elementary Honor Choir.
That was a wonderful job. Students, you did a great job. Let's give another round of applause. Good job, guys. Good job. You guys are the best, right? And let's also give recognition and applause to the teacher, Ms. McCullough, for doing a great job. <laughs> wonderful. As expected, our honor choir did not disappoint, did they? Parents, thank you for taking the time to bring your children. They were amazing. We can tell they came from great families. So thank you for helping us shine this evening. At this time, I have another amazing announcement. So we're gonna invite our board to come down to the dais. I'd like to take the time to share that the district is a recipient of the Grazer Outstanding Achievement and Learning Award for our special education department, Dyslexia Matters, making the invisible visible. Here to present the prestigious Goal Award this evening is Commissioner Dr. Barbara Sorter with the California Department of Education Advisory Commission on Special Education. Following Dr. Sorter's award presentation, there will be a photo opportunity with Dr. Sorter, our board members, Superintendent Ariano, Assistant Superintendent Anna Applegate, Special Education Director, Dr. Juana Lundy. I believe Dr. Rubio is here as well, so we'll invite him to come down. Um, and then we do have some um, members of the Community Advisory Committee as well who will take part. Um, so audience, would you please give Dr. Sorter a warm SBCUSD welcome as, she, as she's here, actually, she's ready to present. Thank you, Dr. Sorter. Hey, I have a tough act to follow. Were they not adorable? All right. The CDE Advisory Commission on Special Education has selected one program annually to honor with the Grazier Outstanding Achievement and Learning Goal Award. The Goal Award was created by the AXI in 2005 in collaboration with film producer Brian Grazier to recognize specially innovative educational programs in California benefiting students with disabilities. The recognition aims to honor people who make these programs possible as well as to share the practices of these programs with parents, educators, and policymakers throughout the state and beyond. The AXI selected San Bernardino City Unified School District's Dyslexia Batters Making Invisible Visible program has the recipient of the 22-23 Goal Award, an accompanying $5,000 financial incentive to support the program moving forward. Dyslexia Matters Making the Invisible Visible aims to proactively address improving literacy for students with disabilities, which is one of the AXI's areas of priority. Dyslexia Matters is an innovating program that establishes a continuum of layered supports, especially in the areas of basic reading, to proactively identify students at risk and provide scientifically proven interventions and evidence-based practices for students identified with reading difficulties and dyslexia. The program is showing great success and working seamlessly within the community, uniting teachers, 
administrators, parents, and district, and other stakeholders around the shared goal of early identification and support to improve literacy outcomes for all students. On behalf of the commission, thank you for your work. We're going to invite, sorry, the um, members of the Community Advisory Committee to, to join us for this photo opportunity. Thank you once again to the California Department of Education and Commissioner Dr. Sorter for this incredible acknowledgement. Before moving forward, we're, we will ask board members to return to their seats here at the dais. Members of executive cabinet will remain seated here in the reserve section. <laughs> this concludes the special presentations portion of tonight's meeting and at this time, I will turn the floor over to Superintendent Mauricio Ariano. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome you here to our meeting today. And uh, thank you for being here today. Thank you for investing your early evening with us today on what we see as a very important day, not only in the San Mario City Unified School District, but for our city as a whole, for the city of San Bernardino. So I want to send everybody a warm welcome. Thank you for being here. And I want you to know that it's a, a, a high honor for me tonight to present our multi-year vision that is gonna guide our work between now and 2030. And tonight, we will also be sharing with you uh, our operating values as a district that we will adopt and uh, work by uh, between now and 2030. 
And so hopefully what you have seen here today as you've walked in is our multi-year vision booklet, which is titled SBCOSD Shines 2030. And it has a purpose statement that reads, cultivating pride, purposeful futures for students to thrive right here. And what was important for me as superintendent was to create a vision that was easy to read, easy to remember, easy to repeat, easy for you to ambassador on behalf of the district, and more importantly, for everyone in our district of our fantastic staff to be able to see the impact to that vision every single day when we come to work. So I wanna thank you for being part of this journey uh, that has brought us here today. And I wanna talk a little bit about what that journey is. And so it started back in the summer where I had the opportunity to schedule and meet with many people, not only within the district, but in our community, with elected officials, with faith-based organizations, um, nonprofit organizations, employees, and just residents. It started with one-on-one -on -one meetings just to get a pulse. Then it continued on with superintendent forums where the community had the opportunity to come and meet with me one-on-one -on -one and share their uh, concerns, their excitement, their vision for this district in person. Then we used the technology, we used Thought Exchange, uh, a software uh, program that allowed anyone in the community, including 3,000 of our high school students. And throughout that whole time and using that software app, we asked three very simple questions. What's working that we have to keep? What do we have that needs a little polishing because we wanna make it better? And what's missing? Three very simple questions is what led us here tonight. And part of that journey uh, not only included our students, as I mentioned, but it included our whole community. And that's what's important for us to recognize today, that what we are sharing here today is not the superintendent's version, uh, vision per se, it's our vision together as a community. So during these last uh, seven or eight months, the board has had an opportunity to mold this vision. Uh, the cabinet has had the opportunity to mold this vision. And we also formed a community committee that helped us mold the version. And to be honest with you, they did the final molding of the product at the end. And uh, we will be recognizing those members of the community committee uh, shortly after the presentation. But I want you to know that this community committee was made up of recommendations from members of the Board of Education, recommendations that I uh, provided, and also a makeup of different folks within our organization. And what the plan was is to have a community committee that reflected not only our diversity that we should celebrate and honor, but also the different lenses in our community. We had people on the community that had parents that went through our system years ago. We had people on the committee that went through the school system. We had people in the community who have businesses here. We have members of the community that are part of our faith-based organization. We had members of the community who are part of our nonprofits. Uh, we had members of the, uh, of the committee that were managers in our district that have been here for 20 years, some who have been here five years. So it was very intentional in having a committee uh, that represented the diversity and the makeup of our community and the lens, different lenses. What was important about that committee, their job, I, I shared with them, was to be that test group. You know, when we make a motion picture, most directors have a little target group that watches the movie and gives the director feedback about what should be cut, what needs to be added, what needs to be missing, what's missing. And so this committee did an outstanding job of helping us chip away and rub that rock until we got a polished product. So uh, we're very happy to say today that we have a vision that represents what the community told us they want this district to look like in 2030. And it's a vision that we built together. So I'm very proud to say that. So before I move on though, I have to acknowledge and thank the previous superintendents, my previous colleagues who set 
the stage for us to be here today. So uh, a huge thank you to Dr. Delgado, to Dr. Marston, to Dr. Volkmer, to Mr. Irvin. Their work over the last several years, their impact and their legacy can still be felt today. And it is their foundation that they created that gave me the honor to be able to build on that. So I want to thank them for all of their leadership and their uh, work in the foundation that they've allowed me as a colleague to build on. So before I go any further, I also want to thank some many of our special guests that are here today that were invited. It was important for me to make sure that this wasn't just a school district event. This is about building our city. This is about not only elevating the school district, this is about elevating our entire city and working in partnership with Mayor Tran, uh, with the San Marino City Council, with Supervisor Joe Baca Jr., with Assemblyman James Ramos, State Representative Eloise Gomez Reyes, State Senator uh, Rosalicio Choa Boga, Upog, who's a, a San Marino High School graduate, and U.S. Representative Pete Aguilar. Together, we are working to make this a better community, a better city, and that we have a future that people will be optimistic. So I say, let this vision, let this document be what bring us together as one, as one community, working together, working in harmony, and working in a positive manner. So before I go further, I would like to invite four of these special members that were on this uh, community committee to say a few words so that they can share their perspective of uh, how important this is not only to us, but as a community. So I will first invite uh, to this microphone here, Pastor Joshua Beckley. Yeah. Oh, it's kind of weird. Huh? Why, don't, why don't you come over here, Pastor Beckley, so we can say. Oh, there you go. Hey, he's a pastor. He knows how this works. <laughs> I'm a pastor, and I like speaking to the folk. <laughs> Ain't nobody that way. <laughs> First of all, I'm honored and excited to be here today. I'm also excited to be a part of the cohort that was involved in putting together this vision for 2030. Uh, I've been involved in this city for over 30 years, uh, involved in the district uh, with Adopt the School program. We host Hunt uh, graduation and work with Hunt Elementary, which is right across the street from our church for the last 20 or 30 years. We also host two after school programs uh, that we run through our church uh, for the district. We have been very much involved with wanting to see our children prosper and our children succeed in this district and doing our part to help the district do that. And then when I was invited to be a part of this cohort and to be a part of giving input into this vision, I, I was uh, wasn't sure what was what was what, what I was in for. I wasn't sure if this was going to be another one of those meetings where they're going to tell us what they were going to do and just get us to say yes, or were they going to give us opportunity to give input and be able to to shape what was being said. And what I really appreciate about this, we're allowed to give opportunity and to shape what was being said. When you read through this, and one of the things I like reading through this, I can see our input in this vision. Uh, the things that we suggested, the things that we thought were important. My major concern was the issue of equity across the board in terms of all of our students, uh, especially in terms of each campusing having resources equal to all other campuses that kids don't have to go to one campus because they have this and this campus doesn't have that. In this vision, they're going to make sure that all of our campuses, wherever our kids are, have the resources they need to succeed and get ahead. And that's the thing that I like most about it. In my faith community, uh, Proverbs says, without a vision, people perish. As a matter of fact, the non-translation says, without a vision, they cast off restraints. Uh, listen, one of the most important things that, that we need to have is a vision to run behind. And then Habakkuk says, you write the vision, make it plain, so they that run it can re re read it, and they can run with you. Listen, we don't need to let the district run with this. We as a community need to run with this. So we need to learn it and understand what it says, and then we get behind our district to make sure it happens, okay? God bless you. It's good to be here. Thank you, Pastor Beckley. Appreciate that. I'd like to invite my longtime friend, Alton Garrett, to say a few words. Mr. Garrett, come on up. I'm going to comply with the superintendent's desires. I'm going to say a few words and then I'm going to go sit down. No, 
in all honesty, uh, it was indeed my pleasure to be a part of this cohort also. Um, you know, uh, following a, a, a pastor, following a politician, those are just the wrong things to have to do. You know? <laughs> but in all honesty, I, I really enjoyed the opportunity to serve on this committee and, and, and to be there at, at each of these sessions and everything. And as the pastor Beckley said, what is in here is what the community said we wanted and we would like to see the board approve and adopt at this at this time. And so that is why uh, it is so beholden upon us to make sure that we as the community stay with the with, with the district and work with the district and make sure that everything that we say in here that it gets done in Vision 2030. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Garrett. I'd like to invite Rodolfina Gamino to come up and say a few words as well, our DLAC president and parent. Gracias. Buenas tardes a todos. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Bueno, en esta vez yo lo voy a decir en español, aunque me sale perfecto el inglés, no se crean, eh? This time I'm going to say it in Spanish, even though I speak English quite perfect. Just kidding, just kidding. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Rodolfina Gamino. Soy madre de cuatro hijos estudiantes del distrito de San Bernardino. Good afternoon, my name is Rodolfina Gamino. I'm a parent of four children, or students, in the San Bernardino district. Para mí fue muy importante haber participado como comunidad y madre involucrada, ya que mis ideas son importantes como las de cualquier otro padre. For me, it was very important to be able to participate in this community as a parent, as a mother, and to be involved, now thinking that my ideas are equally important as everyone else's. Y que de este proyecto depende un futuro mejor, tanto para los estudiantes actuales, así como para las nuevas generaciones. Y poder así que San Bernardino en verdad brille como un distrito que está atento a las necesidades educativas. Because of this project, it depends on the future to better the future for the students, the students that are currently there, and the future generations to be able to make San Bernardino shine bright in a district that is also tending to the needs of the parents. Por eso es muy importante que la comunidad se involucre para ser una sola fuerza y que este proyecto tenga mucho éxito. That's why it's extremely important that the community becomes involved in making the efforts to join this and so that this project can have success. Ya que este trabajo no es de una sola persona, tiene que ser como un rompecabezas, que cada persona haga su parte para lograr esta visión y todos estemos conectados en un solo objetivo. Because this program is not just the work of one person. It's like a puzzle. Every single person has to put their part to be able to acquire this mission. Y reconozcamos que la unidad hace la fuerza. And we need to recognize that unity does give us strength. Gracias. Thank you. Gracias, Señora Camino. And now I will invite my longtime friend, I mean, long time since we were kids, when we both had hair, right, Jim? Mr. Jim Morris. Yeah, it's a tough group to follow. Um, I'll try to be a few words like Elton. Um, it was a wonderful process. Uh, frankly, I think all of us would have liked to have extended it even uh, because it, it really felt, um, we felt heard, valued, um, and that we helped make a difference. Um, but I think that also brings up the fact that we have to own it as well, right? This is a vision for the community. And I think that's where, that's why we felt empowered um, is that that invitation was really, um, don't help us just think about the schools. That's our central pillar, but think about how this radiates out and affects the entire community today and in the long term. And as superintendent said, there was people there who were relatively new to the community, and there are some of us who were there who've been born and raised and lived and now raise our kids in the community. Um, one of the things that I would add to what my colleagues have said is that we actually got stuck in our first meeting around the values, um, and not stuck in a way that we were wondering about them, but really honoring them as a central tenet 
for guiding the district uh, and felt moved that the district would adopt a statement of values as a guide to where it wants to go uh, and how it wants to get there um, equally as important. Um, and so we, we offered our input. Uh, I'm not sure that they expected that. Uh, and so these values help to reflect values that we think the community needs to embrace. Um, and I think there was an underlying sense that if we all shared these values, both within our schools and outside the schools, um, there isn't much that we can't accomplish uh, in this community. And so while I'm tempted to go through and pull out sections of the pillars that resonated with our uh, group, uh, it, it's hard. I started to do that in the back and then I, I ended up having circles everywhere. Um, there's a lot here. Um, so I think I would instead say that what I want to kind of challenge us all, but since we're here at the board's meeting to challenge the board, is that it's not easy to coalesce around a statement of values and, and pillars as your foundation. Um, but it is perhaps more difficult to implement that because that means that you have to stay fastidious to that which has been agreed upon. And that's not easy. Um, and Pastor Beckley could put this much more eloquently uh, in words uh, as only a pastor can do, but there is that sense that it will require trade-offs because you can't take one value and say, well, we're gonna optimize that over the other values or one pillar and we're gonna rest most of our resources upon that pillar. Um, they all have to be equally met and that means that the limited resources that we must husband and shepherd forward must be spread amongst those and those that requires difficult decisions. Um, and so what I would challenge the board with was that and I would challenge the community with standing behind the board because it takes a community united behind this in order to have a board that feels they can be united in making the right decisions. Um, so thank you for the opportunity. Um, I hope it's not the last uh, that the group and others can get together, um, but your words are prescient, Pastor. We own this as well, and we must, uh, we must be a part of that implementation. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morris. Appreciate it. All right, so let's get started. We're going to talk a little bit about what the core values are. And then my outstanding cabinet is going to help me walk us through the vision and talk about the main elements uh, that you expect us to be working on between now and 2030. So if I could have, thank you. So you'll see that we've started with some core values as a district. And I'm not going to go through each one of them because obviously you can have a copy, you can read, internalize it. But I want to point out two that were very important to us, uh, which was the very first one you'll see is human potential. And you'll see the last one that we wrote was about pride. Those were the only two that we intentionally placed on the document. The other ones in between are important, but don't have any particular order. So let me start with human potential. It was important for us to make that our primary uh, operating value because we have to believe that every kid is brilliant. Every single child in our district is brilliant. And it's our job to find it. And we need to make sure that we are very clear in our community and outside our community that zip code is not going to dictate student achievement. All of our kids have the potential and everyone that works in this district has to help believe in this with me that every kid can be the brilliance that they want to be. So that was important. I want the community to know that that's important. Now I'm going to skip over to pride. This is the one where I get a little teary-eyed. So I left in 2002. I left San Bernardino 2002 uh, to work in uh, two other districts since my return. And one of the things that always hurt me was when people found out I was from San Bernardino, their comment was, oh, or if they heard that I taught or I was a principal or I had worked in San Bernardino, oh, those kids are terrible, right? So pride is important because when people ask me, are you from San Bernardino? My answer now is, 
I'm going to give you the soft version. You darn right I'm from San Bernardino. And I need you to help me to create that mindset that when people say you're from San Bernardino, we're going to stand up and we're going to own it and we're going to be prideful about that. So the other thing that I want to touch on on this operating values before I move on to the main document is I want to focus your attention on the section that says equity. And I know Pastor Beckley mentioned uh, the importance of equity, but I want everyone to focus on the word kindness. Everybody see that word kindness in there? You know, in an environment where it's easy to point fingers these days, in an environment when it's easy to call people names, when in an environment where it's easy to divide us and say, you're that and we're this and you don't belong here and you don't belong, it, that's easy. It's harder to be kind. And kindness and love is what brings a community together. And so I challenge you, as Mr. Morris said, as uh, Mr. Garrett said, I challenge us as a community to make kindness how we operate, not only in this district, but in this community. Because kindness and love is what's going to bring the city together and elevate us to that area of shine that we are aspiring to, not only as a district, but as a city. So kindness, guys, kindness. <laughs> So you will see a copy of the operating values in poster form throughout our district because I want people to know this is how we operate day to day. This is what we feel internally every day when we work with our kids, when we work with our parents, when we work with the community, when we work with each other. This is what's going to guide our disposition with the community. So uh, please take this home with you. Please take five of them. Distribute it out. I need you to, Ambassador, that we are about pride, human potential, kindness in this district. Next slide, please. So I'm going to start talking about the multi-year vision, you know, the 2030 vision, what we're going to be doing, working here. And I want you to see the word right here. And I want to thank Danny Tillman because Danny was the first one that noticed, hey, I like that. I like that right here. I'm going to go back to all those negative comments I always get when I, when I would get about San Bernardino. I want people to know that you're going to get a world-class education right here. You're going to learn to be a good citizen right here. You're going to learn how to be civically engaged in your community right here. You're going to thrive in your life right here. So it's intentional that we use the word right here as part of our purpose statement. So I'm going to open, if those of you that have the book, I'm going to invite you to go to the next page, our mission. You remember I start off by saying, I like things that are easy to read, easy to replicate, easy to repeat. And the same goes with the mission statement. And I, I got to give our community committee a lot of credit. They really helped us uh, wordsmith this because we wanted it to be such a statement that you could remember to say it, if not the most important elements. But what I want to point out about this mission statement here, and I hope you've seen the difference between our mission statement and what other school districts are talking about. School districts are talking about, let's get the kids through 12th grade and uh, hope everything goes Good. Our job is making sure that kids are going to thrive in their life, in their career. And that was important. That last line in our mission statement is really important. To thrive in school, career, and life. And so I want us to remember those three lines when you're out in the community and people ask you, what is San Bernardino working towards to make sure our kids thrive? Why is that important? If our kids thrive, our community thrives, our economy thrives, our, our way of life in San Marino thrives uh, because we are preparing people to be involved and be productive. So uh, if all else, please remember the last three lines. And I'm going to give my good friend Ray Culberson credit because he said at one point, you know, you need a strong word in there. And so determination was the word that we put in there. Uh, so, Ray, whenever time you see the word determination, I want you to know that was a Culberson uh, impact there. So, Now, I'm going to talk about the six pillars. Next slide, please. Again, our community committee and the board did such a great job really uh, hashing these uh, statements out. The word shines came from all the feedback from our community. But they used the word brilliant and brilliance and how we have brilliance and we need to work towards brilliance. But it was really hard to come up with an acronym for brilliance. 
So we uh, looked uh, at synonyms and we used shines. And that's how we got to the word shine. SBCUSD shines. And that is a hashtag that we will be using. But we decided on six pillar statements. What are these six pillar statements? Where did they come from? They came from the community. You will probably recognize a lot of this because it was embedded in Mr. Irvin's work. It was embedded in Mr. Marston's work. It was embedded in Dr. Delgado's work. So we are building on the legacies of everyone before us. And we're building on the legacy that you hope you guys created your own yourself. I just have the honor of coming in and building on it with you together. But you see, these are the six pillar statements that we're going to be working towards 2030. So there's high expectations in academics. One thing that I heard Tim Prince once say in a board meeting before I started was, one of the goals we should have is that San Diego City Unified School District, School District be viewed as a serious institution for academics. And he's right. And I think we all agree with that. You know, we want to be that example throughout the entire state of academic excellence uh, for our students, and we're going to get there. And so you see the six pillar statement starts with SBCUSC strong. Again, it's that whole theme of having pride. We are strong. We work together. We're united. We're working around one common vision around the district and the city. And so we want to keep uh, reminding everyone that we are proud, proud, proud to be from San Bernardino. We are proud to work in San Bernardino. We are proud to uh, mold the minds of our youth, right? Working together as a community. So I won't read the rest of them, but I have the pleasure of inviting the members of my outstanding cabinet. I get to work with outstanding people every day who are smarter than me. And when you're a leader, that's what you want. You want people that are smarter than you. And so I'm going to call upon each one of my cabinet members today to talk about the sub bullets within each one of those pillar statements. Um, and then I'll come back around at the end and talk about the action plan that, that, that goes behind. So I'd like to invite Mary Rowan Goodwin to the podium. And if we can have the next slide and talk about the importance of SBCUSD Strong. Are you sick of me coming up here yet? Okay, here I am again. So I'm here to talk about SBCUSD Strong. Raise your hand if you're from this community. If you've gone to this district, we consider you SBCUSD made. Well, I, like many of you, like our superintendent, was raised here in this community. So it is a pleasure for me to join you this evening. When you talk about pride, I have got pride in San Bernardino, okay? I live it, I breathe it, I, I live, work, and play right here. But SBCUSD is made up of multiple communities outside of San Bernardino proper, right? We've got unincorporated areas. We also have the city of Highland that we have schools there. So we are far and wide. We have 46,000 students matriculating here. Um, this is where I still live. I'm still about my city here. I'm still about this district. So we have a lot to be proud of. And pride, you'll hear this a lot, is really our strength. That whole don't tread on me, don't tread on San Bernardino, don't tread on this district. There is so much promise. There are so many opportunities for our students, for our families, and also for our staff to thrive. There's that upward mobility. We want to see our staff be happy and thrive. This is a great place to work as well. And so one of the things when it comes to SBCUSD Strong and that hashtag, you'll see that um, being used a lot more, is that this is a place where all of us belong. All of us. This is a, this is a vision where all of us belong. We all have a piece in that. We heard that earlier from our community members. And I hope that each of you feel and you can see that, you know, there are bullets, there are, there are commitments that you see yourselves also um, a part of. So we want to make sure that uh, this vision is, is our vision. So with that, I'd love to invite our Assistant Superintendent of Ed Services, Anna Applegate. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And Mr. Arellano, you stole my thunder because <laughs> I was going to come up and say that SBCUSD is committed to being a district of choice for academics. How's that, right? How's that for a challenge? Yeah, right. We, we can do it. I know we can do it. So we want to be a district of choice for academics. So not only ensuring that our kids are proficient in English language arts, writing, math, those content areas, right? 
but we understand that we have the students of the future. We want to be innovative and we want to be forward thinking and we want to provide our students with a world-class education that is really rooted in STEAM, is rooted in opportunities that they're going to need for the, the world of the future. So with that, we want to make sure that we're exposing them to college and career opportunities, CTE pathways. We're having internships for them to participate in so that hopefully they can come here and, and set their roots in our city and help our business grow here because we know that that's going to help our community in the long run. So we're very excited to have different opportunities for our students that will propel them into the future and they can be successful and competitive with that. And along with that, we also are very conscious that all of our students are at different levels of learning. So we want to implement a very robust, very rigorous, multi-tiered system of support. Three tiers of support for our students so that all of our students have tier one, their, their great education that we're providing. But then on top of that, it's additive with every tier. We're providing more support for students who need it. So we want to make sure that we're, we're meeting all of our diverse student needs and propelling them to a future that they can all be proud of so that they can all hopefully remain here and help our city grow and come back. So thank you. And with that, I will hand it over to my colleague, Dr. Sandra Rodriguez, Assistant Superintendent of Student Services. Thank you, Mrs. Applegate. So I'm one of those that um, never left. So I am a product of San Bernardino and continue to work in San Bernardino. I'm a cardinal and a cowboy. So I'm very, very proud about that. And my career here in San Bernardino has spanned over 30 years. And so I've been um, very proud of the commitments that have been made. I live in San Bernardino. In fact, Mr. Tillman's my neighbor. Not really, but we live in the same area. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a great place. And so um, when Mr. Ariano came to the district, you know, he got to see lots of the things that were happening in the district. And one of the things I can remember is we invited him to our parent president luncheon. And so our parent president luncheon is where we have the leads of all of our parent groups from DLAC, our uh, DAAAC, DAC, CAC, all of those leads. And together they meet to be the voice of their respective groups. And he said, wow, I've never seen that before. I've never, I've never been a part of that. And what was so powerful was that those, well, from those four committees, we had two representatives from each, had a lot of power. And the power was the agency that they had. They felt heard, they felt that they mattered, and they felt and they knew that the impact that they made and the things that they said and brought to our attention were going to be addressed and we're going that there will be action. And so great things are coming out of that. And so when we talk about the involvement of of our groups and we see uh, Mr. Baca's here and joined us and he's wearing our slack uh, sweatshirt. That is our student leadership. Like you came right on cue. Um, and so it speaks to the involvement of all of our partners, everybody that's part of our district. That is our strength. When we talk about what it is, you know, people can talk about, we can talk about each other, but no one can talk about us, right? And so, um, it is what it is. That's the way, that's the code. And so, um, you know, that, that, is, that is a point of strength and it is a point of, um, of pride. And so this particular pillar is really speaking to that. And you heard from our community members, the strength and also the ownership that they have in making this community better. And so with this, our commitments are that we will continue to work side by side with two-way communication, not one-way communication, but that we are present and that we are listening and that we have dialogues, that we're working together to be able to provide a better opportunity for our kids. And so with our through our community schools projects, through our before and after school programs, our community schools, there's so many wonderful programs that we're able to meet the needs of our community. Our schools exist to create opportunities for our students and our families and the businesses. And so we look forward to continuing that work. And as you can see here, we're committed to that collaboration and we're committed to seeing things through. So whether you're a baby, and I saw a couple that I recruited for uh, Ms. Latasha, you know, if you're a baby, we have a place for you. If you're 99 years old, we have a place for you. 
in this school district, there is a place for everyone. And if you have a business in this community, there is a place for you too. And so when we all work together, the community's stronger. And partners like Santa Claus Incorporated, um, our, our uh, faith-based organizations, all of us together can make that difference. And when we think about synergy and we talk about the lift that we need to make, with many hands makes light work. And this pillar speaks to that. At this time, I'd like to introduce um, my colleague, Associate Superintendent of Business Services, Mr. Terry Komnick. Well, good evening, everyone. I, it makes me think, as, as Dr. Rodriguez was talking, uh, just how large we are, 110 square miles, plus or minus. We've got 70 plus schools. We've got over 8,000 staff. But we're a community, we, we're a tight knit, evidenced in here. It's, it's a very warm affect that we have as we interact with each other throughout the district. When I think of the mission statement that talks about to thrive in, in school, career, and life, it really feeds itself right into nutrition, health, and wellness. Just want to point out three, three key areas in this particular pillar that talks about the well-rounded whole student at looking at the mental, physical, and social-emotional well-being of our students that really sets the stage for learning to occur, for the academic door to open and be embraced and engaged uh, by our students. The, the next bullet I wanted to point out was, um, Mr. Ariano spoke about the thought exchange, and it's a, it's a really cool platform that allows us to take ideas and have a multiplier effect on how we rate those ideas. And one of the ideas that came out was from our students, our student voice. And in that student voice was, about input in their nutritional well-being, if you will, by making, can we have a, a word in our food choice at our cafeterias? And uh, sure enough, we've already started that process, and I know we're right around dinner time, but I just wanted to share a few of these that, that resonated to the top uh, with very high percentages. So like 97% uh, talked about the bean and cheese, uh, Popupas with uh, made from scratch, and this was from Cajon High School, from our uh, Royal Valley High School at 99.3 percent. Uh, teriyaki dumplings, teriyaki dumplings. One last one I'll show you with is is dessert, uh, pumpkin harvest bread at 97.8 percent, and that was from Arrowview Middle School. So already the input is there. We're hearing and listening to our students to better serve them so that they can go to class. Nice, full, ready to learn and engage. And the last thing I wanted to share with you is that final bullet that speaks to that well-rounded uh, whole student approach. And that's through our VAPA, our uh, Visual and Performing Arts, and our extended learning program opportunities that give those students that enrichment, that balance to not only thrive uh, right here, but also to thrive in life. With that, I'd like to hand this over to Dr. Marcus Funches, our Human Resources Assistant Superintendent. Good evening. I, I was reflecting the other day. I, I, I got a chance to see a picture of me back when I came into the district in 1998. And what struck me about that picture at 25 years old, I still look like that. In all seriousness, I, I, I've been here for 26 years. And the, one of the reasons that I stayed here is because this district is not afraid to take on the tough issues. We've never been afraid to say what we needed to say and do what we needed to do. When some districts went right, we were going left. And so I have the honor of talking real briefly about equity as a foundation. And throughout this 2030 vision document, what you'll see is the phrase, all students shall, or all students. You'll see that time and time again. And you'll see it over and over. And that's what equity is about. Equity is about ensuring that all of our scholars, all of our students receive what they need to develop their full academic and social potential. That's what Mr. Ariano talked about in terms of life. And our board, our board has been an advocate for equity even before it became a popular term. The TIP policy that's located within that equity pillar is something that our board put together way before its time. I want to give them a round of applause for that. 
But it's our intent to continue this bold and courageous work. And I'm going to involve you real quick. So through our vision 2030, we will set and meet, not only set, but meet the ambitious goals for developing transformative systems that do the following. And when I point to you, I would love for you to say the word equity with me, because that's a vocabulary word that you should take home uh, with this pillar. OK, so I just a little bit of a call back. When I point to you, you say the word equity. So we're, we're putting together transformative systems that do the following. So listen carefully. Provide the necessary funding and resources that our individual schools need based on their own context. Equity. That's right. And the last one, we're going to say it a little bit more uh, with feeling, a little bit more. <laughs> Staff training that not only targets assumptions and biases, but provides the tools necessary for culturally proficient teaching and learning. Equity. And then finally, we're going to say this one with some feeling. We're building welcoming school environments where students excel because, not in spite of, but because their cultural backgrounds and identities are affirmed. Equity. What'd you say? Equity. And that's what equity is all about. I want to bring to the podium at this time a friend and colleague, Mr. Chief Paulino. Thank you, Aaron. Dr. Funches gave me PTSD with the roll call. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like a drill sergeant uh, in the army. You know, it's good to be here with friends and family, especially along with your faith and our work. Yeah, it's a blessing to be here. Of course, it's always that urgency to give thanks. Yeah, and thanks for all the leadership, our board, our superintendent, my colleagues. Yeah. However, you know, I'm reminded um, of the language of Desmond. And you'll find it in this pillar, which is the sixth pillar of our work. Working towards that vision of 2030, where Desmond reminds us that all of us are humane. And he says, my humanity is bounded in yours, so we can only be humane together. So, of course, this work on the sixth pillar says that to me. And of course, Sam, in the voice of our superintendent, uh, where we're trying to go forward and create the jewel of our community, where you come to facilities that's well-maintained, facilities that shows that they care about you, facilities in that you engage your humanity, where you know that we value you. In terms of African proverbs, that we see you, which means I love you. Uh, so of course, Sam, it's what we practice in this place and we call SBCUSD. And of course, there are some areas I want to point out for you. Yeah, and that first pillar speaks to me in terms of safety, protection, an inviting place for all of us as a holistic community to come to. And of course, that second pillar speaks to our humanity, where we see you as a human being, a person, and I'm talking to a holistic community, so it's important that you know that our facility in the near future will always invite you to participate. And of course, Sam, that third pillar Sam, talks about tidy, appealing, inviting facilities across the board. And of course, Sam, that fourth pillar speaks to informed and informed community, people that's capable, people that has the capacity well educated in terms of delivering safety you know, across the board for our kids. Of course, the last thing is our commitment to 21st century equipment, where we use technology as a force multiplier for us. So ours, good people, is a community that will be safe, secure, a learning environment for all our kids, you, that 90-year-old, that they said, yeah, regardless of your age, yeah, thanks for your time, and I'll pass it over to our superintendent. So, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion of sharing this with our community, um, I'm asking you now to go out and be our ambassadors. This document 
will be flooded in our community because it's important for everyone to know what our district is committed to, what we're working towards. So starting today, assuming the board approves it, I think they will. They, they wrote half of it, so. This document will be sent out to all parents, all employees. We're going to send them to all libraries. We're going to send them to all coffee shops. We're going to send them to realtors. We're going to send them to our university partners, our business partners. We want this to be on the counters of everything that happens in San Bernardino so that people are clear about what we're working on. And I need you to help me, Ambassador. Which brings me back to my opening statement, easy to read, easy to repeat, easy to see our impact day to day. So I want to say to all of you, thank you for your input. Thank you for being here today. The cabinet's work now is to create the action plan that stands behind us. The who, the what, what is the metric, what is responsible, who is responsible, how often do we uh, check on ourselves so that the board can hold me accountable and I can hold cabinet accountable and cabinet can hold our principals accountable and we hold each other accountable as a community. So you will be seeing reports in the future about our progress towards this 2030 vision. So uh, I want to thank the Board of Education for all the support that you have given me since I've, on my return, the support that you've given my outstanding cabinet, the support of the people that are behind you that work for us every day in our school sites. Um, thank you, board, for that support. And we hope that tonight uh, you will uh, vote in the affirmative and support this multi-year vision and let this guide our work till 2030. And now I'll pass it over to Mary Rome because we are going to recognize and thank those wonderful folks from our community uh, for their good work and the continued work that we're gonna do moving forward. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate your time. Hey, you heard it here first. He, he said that he intends to honor the work begun under the district's previous superintendents um, and that he, he set course to honor the work of, of our partners this evening. So I'm going to invite our board, our superintendent, to take your places in front of the dais so that we can individually and formally recognize the work of all of our partners. You heard from four, but there were there were many more. Partners, as I call your name, would you please come forward, accessing the ramp here. We're going to invite our, our executive cabinet to take their places along the ramp. As I call your name, you're going to be accessing the ramp. You'll shake hands with the members of executive cabinet and you will be handed your, your recognition. Okay, first we have Rocio Aguayo. Rocio, once you get to um, Myra, Myra, raise your hand. You're going to take a pause right there for a photo opportunity. Okay, Rocio? And then you can continue shaking hands. Let's do your photo op right there. There we go. Ready? Look to Karina. Smile. Thank you very much. Let's welcome Dr. Gregory Alexander. And again, Dr. Alexander, once you get to uh, Mr. Tillman here and Myra, you're going to stop here for a photo opportunity. Right about there, Dr. Alexander, let's stop for a photo op and then you can continue shaking hands. Next up, we have Tommy Archuleta. Thank you.
you. Up next is Kathy Atencio. Up next, we have Pastor Joshua Beckley, a familiar face this evening. Thank you. Up next, we have Laura Cardenas. Oh, she's she was she was not able to join us this evening, but we thank her for her contributions. Up next, we have Mr. Ray Colberson. Up next, we have Jim Cunningham. Excellent. Next, we have Senora Rodolfina Camino. Welcome. Thank you. You got it. Next, we have Richard Gonzalez. Is he not here? Okay. Okay. Dr. Keisha Handy still here?
Up next, we have Mr. Alton Garrett. Up next is Teresa Hunter. Thank you. We have Dr. Shirley Jean. Jim Morris. Barbara Pastachek Cox. Thank you. You so great. No, you're awesome. Thank you. Dr. Natalie Raimundo. Risha Sims.
And our last recognition this evening, but certainly not least, is Eric the Tear. There were several partners who could not make it this evening, which includes Dr. Sam Gibbs, Carrie Gilbreth, Robert Porter, Tim Prince, um, Jim Smith, uh, Laura Cardenas, Dr. Will Greer, and Cecil Wright. Um, however, we do want to publicly thank them for their contributions to the success of Vision 2030. Board Superintendent Cabinet, would you please return to your seats at the dais? And as they take their seats, I want to take a moment to thank our gracious audience for showing your support for the district's vision. Um, and this concludes this evening's administrative presentation. I now turn the floor over to President Tillman. Section 5, 5.1, public comments. Receive public comments. This is the only time the public will have an opportunity to address the board on items not on the agenda and within their subject matter jurisdiction, such as district policies, procedures, programs, services, and fiscal matters. Public comments are limited to five minutes per person. Six or more people who wish to speak on one topic will provide no more than 30 minutes total. Speakers are cautioned that under California law, no person is immune from liability for making intentionally false or defamatory comments regarding any person simply because these comments are made at a public meeting. And our first public comment is from Supervisor Joe Baca Jr. Our first public comment is Supervisor Joe Blocker Jr. Thank you, Honorable President, Board Member, Superintendent, Cabinet, and Community Members. It uh, gives me great pleasure to be here for a presentation. And uh, one of the things that's very, very important to keep in mind, I, you know, when you talk about facilities for school districts, how difficult it is to, to find money to produce districts. Usually you have to do it through a bond, which is very, very difficult. Sometimes you have to get the voters of the community to do it. But the great opportunity that we had through the American Rescue Plan Act in the uh, County of San Bernardino, we received $432.5 million. As a result, each one of the Board of Supervisors received some discretionary money. And with that, I had the opportunity to make several contributions to this school district. And I really want to thank my colleagues on the County Board of Supervisors for giving me that opportunity. And some people say, Joe, you know, why are you making investments in school? Well, schools are an important part of our community. You know, they're a pillar for our children. As you went through your previous presentation, you talked about all the different pillars and what it means to our kids and our families. 
And for me, you know, I know that there are many of those in this community that are disadvantaged. And this is an opportunity to make an investment. I just want to share some of the previous investments that we've made in this district. One, we invested $1.5 million in the Indian Springs for the Wellness Center. We know that many of our children are suffering uh, greatly, especially as we look at going from the internet era to social media to um, you know phones. Things have changed, and this is a great investment to really try to get our kids the help they need at the Indian Springs and in that community. The other investment we made is uh, in the Muscoy community, a little over $2 million to improve school facilities, outdoor facilities, and that's been a great investment. The other investment we made, just a little over a million dollars for Pakuma Middle School to add lighting, which was in demand by the district. The community was asking for it. Uh, there was a survey that was done, and it was a high priority for them. We were able to make that investment. Today, we're making an investment at Arrowhead Elementary School. So item 10.7 on your agenda, uh, we're here on behalf of the County of San Bernardino and the Board of Supervisors to you know, present $1.3 million for the, uh, to the County or San Bernardino City Unified School District to improve the playgrounds, to make some playground improvements, but also to forge a partnership that hopefully in the future uh, will forge a greater partnership between the County of San Bernardino and the San Bernardino City Unified School District. And me as a former educator, you know, I just renewed my teaching credential. I don't look the same as I did 20 years ago and like Dr. Funches, who still looks the same, I'm a little grayer, the head sliding backwards, but, um, but more importantly, you know, it's, it's the heart for the community and the heart of an educator and that has not changed. So I'd like to present a check. I'd like to ask the Board of Education, the student, uh, uh, board members and the superintendent to come down on item 10.7. I assume you're going to approve uh, as it comes through for uh, $1.3 million. So let's congratulate the San Francisco City Unified School District. Congratulations. Yeah, come on down. Thank you, Supervisor Baca. Next, Ms. Megan Owens. Good evening, school board members, Superintendent Ariano and cabinet. My name is Megan Owens, and I'm a fifth grade teacher at one of our elementary schools. I'm here today to talk to you about a violent physical attack that occurred on one of our elementary school campuses and the possible repercussions for the attacker. I believe it's important for you all to know what is happening on our school campuses. March 14th started like any normal school day. After hearing on the radio during lunch that there was a fight involving one of my students happening, I began to walk towards the cafeteria. I've replayed the moments that followed over sorry, and over in my head. Students were pouring out of the cafeteria, sobbing and shouting to me, he can't breathe, he's not breathing, Miss Owens. As I ran through the cafeteria and towards my student, A, I saw him lying on the ground between the cafeteria and boys' bathroom. One of our rec aides, Miss B, was sitting behind him, cradling him in her arms. They were both covered in his blood. It was a truly horrifying sight. My 10-year-old student's face was dripping blood, and his nose and mouth were ble bleeding so profusely that he was having trouble taking a breath. His entire body was shaking, and he seemed like he was in a daze. He just kept repeating, I didn't do anything, I didn't do anything. Miss B and I held back our tears as 911 call was called and we waited for the paramedics. I later found out that a group of three boys had jumped my student as he was leaving the bathroom. After he was hit in the face, he fell, hit his head, 
and lost consciousness for a moment. The boys continued to kick and punch him while he was lying on the ground. One of our rec aides, Miss B, stepped in and covered him with her own body when the boys continued to attack him. At least one of the boys, the sixth grader, continued to hit and kick Miss B as she used her body to shield A from the attack. The sixth grader later apologized to Miss B with a smirk, telling her, you know those hits weren't meant for you. He showed no remorse for attacking A. After leaving A with the paramedics and his father, I went to check on the other students who had witnessed the attack. As I approached my class and a large group of students from the other fifth grade class, I saw that most of them were in hysterics. About 25 of the students were sobbing or hyperventilating. The rest of them were comforting their classmates. Many of the children were afraid A was going to die or that he had stopped breathing. I did my best to hold myself together as I comforted them and assured them that he would be okay. We ended up having to call in extra district uh, counseling support that day because of how traumatizing the attack was on so many of the students. I'm here today because the sixth grade student who was the primary attacker of A is being recommended for expulsion and his hearing is being held tomorrow. I know that this student has been recommended for expulsion before, but was transferred to our school instead. He has been in countless fights this school year and his recent attack on a student and staff member has left many of our students afraid of even coming to school. Allowing this student to return would cause additional trauma and pain to our school community and the students and staff who were involved in the attack. attack. It would also send a message to other students that their safety is not important and that students can get away with this type of violent behavior. As stated in our district operating values, our number one job as educators is to keep our students safe before we can even educate them mentally and physically. Children cannot learn if they don't feel safe. It's my hope that the expulsion board will see that this student is a danger to our students and staff and choose to expel him from our campus. However, if not, I will be back at our next school board meeting with parents and other staff members to continue to advocate for our school community and the safety of my students. We cannot begin to heal without closure and consequences for this violent attack. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Owens. I can't read your last name, but I believe your first name is Miss Jenny. Is that right? No. Your last name is NC. NC Jean? Jeannie, maybe? Oh, Nor okay, Norwood. Okay, Miss Norwood. Um, so I, I wanted to uh, talk about the parent square because um, some of the people that I work with and then I have a brother whose kids also are in the school district, some of the information that's given out th through the parent square at my children's school is not being sent to all of the parents. And um, it's important because my daughter's in the math academy and um, I've been to multiple meetings here and um, APAC, School Site Council for my children's school, and they're continuously always talking about the test scores being low. So if it's something that's, I guess to me, detrimental that the kids can um, benefit from, it should be sent to all the school districts. So uh, one of my coworkers, she told me like, what can she do to have the school Put that information out so i told her call the school start there N nothing was done i reached out to the superintendent the vice superintendent by phone <laughs> it's almost like i was dead it to even talk to anyone first of all so i said okay i'm gonna email sorry i'm just sh shooking up by her story <laughs> so i sent the email no response so 
as a parent, it's just like, it's like you're not being heard. And it's almost like no one cares. But it, the education is important, but I'm sorry, what she was talking about, it's like I've been to multiple meetings now, and it's like every time I come here, somebody's talking about the kids being hurt. Like, this is crazy. This is, I don't know. But my concern was the parent square, but the safety of the kids is like, I guess I'll be back next week to address that too. Because like I said, when I try to reach out, I'm not getting a response, no matter who I try to talk to. And I don't understand why. Well, I can guarantee Ms. Noah, someone will uh, contact you. We have your phone number here, and we'll get back to you, okay? Thank you. Next is Ms. Uh, Ashley Bettis Alcala. Good evening, President Tillman, Vice President Ceballos, Superintendent Ariano, members of board and cabinet. I'm Ashley Betis Alcala, President of the San Rodino Teachers Association, and I'm speaking to you tonight on behalf of our 3,000 members. As we approach National School Library Day on April 4th, this Thursday, it's imperative that we recognize the immense dedication and service of our teacher librarians. These educators, go beyond mere custodians of books. They are pivotal in guiding our children through the vast oceans of information, be it through texts, digital resources, or technology. Their commitment not only enriches the educational landscape, but it also ensures that our students are equipped with the knowledge and resources to thrive in an ever-evolving world. And we want to thank them for their hard work and dedication to our students and the education profession. And it's important to note that we have been able to keep teacher librarians in our district in the times when other districts have cut them. So thank you for the board and the district for your commitment to keeping those positions. Moreover, at this time of the year, it's with a heavy heart that we remember a tragic event that profoundly impacted our community. Seven years ago, on April 10th, the North Park community was struck by an unimaginable tragedy that claimed the lives of two of our cherished members of the community. Karen Smith, a dedicated special education teacher who touched the lives of many with her joy and compassion, and her student, Jonathan Martinez, who was known for his infectious smile and friendliness. They both left an indelible mark on all who knew them, and their absence is deeply felt, and they are greatly missed. Our thoughts and prayers continue to be with their families, friends, and classmates. And in that same breath of remembrance, we also find a glimmer of hope and resilience in Jonathan's classmate, Nolan, who despite adversity has thrived and continues to inspire us with his courage and strength. He is a true superhero. And to our educators and staff and community of North Park, your strength and love and solidarity exemplify what it means to be San Bernardino strong. Thank you for the opportunity to share these acknowledgements tonight, and together we can continue to build a community that honors the past, celebrates the present, builds a brighter future, and continues to shine. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Alcala. This is Miss Maria Carmen Gonzalez. Hola, buenas tardes. Let me get the interpreter one second, please.
Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Macarmen González. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Macarmen González. Estoy con la Colectiva Popular para la Justicia Ambiental. I am with the Collective for uh, Environmental Justice. Hace un rato cuando yo entré por aquí, um, mi pecho se comprimió porque hace algunos ayeres, no digo cuántos, eh, fui una madre activa aquí en este distrito y sigo siendo activa, aunque ya mi hijo ya, ya de niño no tiene nada. So, a little while ago when I walked in, my chest just compressed a bit because I used to be an active parent. I'm still an active parent, but my son now, he's no longer a child. Y me da mucho gusto volver a ver algunas caritas todavía que recuerdo con mucho cariño y con mucho amor porque yo le sigo teniendo mucho cariño al distrito de San Bernardino. And it's wonderful to see some familiar faces that I recognize with such love and just care because I care about San Bernardino very much. El motivo de que yo estoy hoy aquí es primero que nada para agradecer al distrito por reconocer a dos compañeras que ya partieron. The reason that I'm here today is to thank the district for recognizing two of my colleagues that have departed already. Que fue Erika Delgado y Liliana Valenzuela. It was Erika Delgado and Liliana Valenzuela. Fuimos uh, compañeras y trabajamos duro para el distrito, del cual yo estoy muy orgullosa. We were colleagues and we worked really hard for the district in which I am so proud of. En segundo, uh, estoy aquí porque traigo por aquí unos flyers donde yo los quiero invitar. Yo los quiero invitar a una caminata, ya que aquí en San Bernardino tenemos muy pocos espacios de áreas verdes. And the second reason that I'm here is because I brought some flyers to invite you all to a walk because here in San Bernardino we don't have many green spaces. Y como ustedes saben, las enfermedades están a la orden del día. And as you know, sickness and illnesses are rising. El asma, cáncer, um, ca a enfermedades cardiovasculares. Asthma, cancer, cardiovascular diseases. Por eso, uh, por ese motivo, es que tenemos una serie de caminatas en el área de uh, Blake Park. And that's one of the reasons that we have a series of walks in the area of Lake Park. Y vengo a invitarlos a todos y ya si me permiten dejar unos volantes eh, para mismo promocionar el deporte, la, 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 la salud. And so I am here to share some flyers and also to ask if I can leave some just to promote health and, you know, just in the same way, health-wise. Nuestra primera caminata será aquí en San Bernardino el día 13 de abril a las 8 a.m. y todos ustedes también están invitados. Se ponen sus tenis y vamos a ver si tienen condición. And the first walk is going to be in San Bernardino on the 13th of April at 8 a.m. Put on your tennis shoes and we'll see if you're conditioned. Los invito. Gracias. I invite you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Just real quick, um, good evening, board members. My name is Angie Valderas. I'm also with the People's Collective for Environmental Justice. We're a local grassroots organization here. Uh, we deal not only with environmental justice, but every other social movement because they all intersect, right? Uh, so like my compañera Mari Carmen said, we would love to invite y'all. And just since we shouted out earlier about um, being a proud San Bernardino Unified School District alumni, I am also Cajon High School in the house, thank you. And um, congrats to my old, uh, well, my former uh, VP, Mr. Um, Corberson. So congrats to him. And um, yes, like my compañera Mar Carmen said, we would love for y'all to join us April 13th at Blair Park. And it's very, very important. I know y'all do a great job of keeping our students safe to the best of your ability, mental health, uh, physical health, them learning. But as local organizations and community, we, sh we would love to do that outside of work. So we wanna invite y'all to this community walk to join us April 13th from 8 a.m. to 11. Um, we'll have light snacks for folks and um, bring your water bottles. We'll have water and so forth. Um, it's very important, especially for somebody who comes from San Bernardino, that we uplift these green spaces. And especially where 
you know, we're being, you know, infested by a lot of warehouses and other cumulative um, uh, pollution and, and stuff. So by rail yards and so forth. So a lot of our students don't have a lot of green spaces outside of their schools. So this is a perfect opportunity for us to um, collab, join us, and, and uplift our green spaces here in San Bernardino. So thank you so much. Y'all have a great evening and hope to see you. Thank you. Thank you. And who should we leave the flyers with? All right. Thank you. You're the lucky one. All right. I believe the next speaker is Ms. Danielle, and I can't make out your last name. Weathers? Yes. It's Daniel Weathers. Thank you. Good evening, board members. My name is Danielle Weathers, and my son attends Aurora Valley High School. Well, actually, all three of my children have attended Aurora Valley High School. My first, her name is Cheyenne Turner. She's a Hall of Fame in the basketball court. Um, and stadium, and also my oldest son, Jonathan Turner, is a Hall of Fame at Aurora Valley in the Hall of Fame and um, the high school uh, stadium also. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of my son, Ronald Weathers. He was bullied three times. The first was November the 27th, and he was suspended for um, self-defense. And then the second time, they actually jumped my son uh, there were six of them, and one was actually stabbing him with a pencil. I did not see this video until there was a serious incident that happened January 22nd when there was a serious incident that happened behind the school um, between the projects and I want to say it's a walkway behind a rural valley and the projects. So when students fight, they meet up there. That's where they meet to fight. So particularly that day, there was a couple football players that have never, ever been in trouble. Um, and my son, with the same, I'm going to say, game bangers that attend a Royal Valley, that, that when last year, the, the principal that was on duty last year told my husband that those students were not going to be there anymore, that my son was going to be safe. And that was not true. There was no safety for my son. So that happened last year. And so they kept picking on all of the football players. A majority of them were ignoring them and just pretending to get through the school. And on January 22nd, something really, really terrible happened. They all met at that park. And that was supposed to be the last of it, the last fight. But there was a particular student that does not even attend there. Well, I heard that. Well, I know that he doesn't attend there. But behind the school board, they're saying that this student attends there. He doesn't. He got hurt. And God forbid, I mean, I, 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 mean, I didn't want that child to get hurt. I was trying to pursue this because I was going to take my son out. But my son is number one in San Bernardino. He took a Royal Valley to the playoffs the first game he's on espn i mean he just has future expectations going on and i like i said they got fed up with the bullying and everything so this child got hurt and um certain football players and my son was taken into custody and um so forth they're still being bullied on certain aspects i'm not going to say how when but they are and my son is up for explosion next month and so are certain other football players that are up for explosion next month and my son is a my son is a senior he's supposed to walk that stage and he's supposed to be going to college and guess what just because one incident put my son behind and i understand yes you're supposed to get punished for the things that you have done but when a student has been bullied for two years and nothing has been done what can you do 
So we're actually paying for this. We are paying for this. And I, I'm all I'm asking is just for safety for all these students. Um, so four on, so no one else will get hurt because someone else is probably going to die. And we don't want that for our students at all. We want to see them graduate. We want to see them proceed in a career. And I'm just asking you to pursue in more safety at that school, please. And I, that's all I have to say. And God bless everybody. Thank you, Ms. Meadows. Section six, closed session. Are there any closed session public comments? There are none. Thank you.
<laughs> oh, <that's> <laughs> <laughs> man. <laughs> like to call the meeting back to order? Actions recorded, reported from closed session. 7.1 approval of coordinator special education, data and compliance. B resolved the Board of Education approved the appointment of the following employee, Patrick Smith, coordinator special education, data and compliance, effective date, work year, and salary to be determined. Funding 802. So moved. Second. It was moved by Ms. Medina and second by Mrs. Alexander. Vote, please. Seven point one, I mean seven point two. All right. All right, board, I have the pleasure of introducing I have the pleasure of introducing to you Mr. Patrick Smith, another homegrown San Bernardino employee. He's been with us since two thousand two, substitute teacher, special education uh, teacher, program specialist, and now being promoted to coordinator. Uh, Mr. Smith cares deeply about our special needs scholars in this community. Um, he has a knack for and a comprehensive background in data and the use of data to make informed decisions about uh, special needs scholars. Uh, as I worked as a principal, I remember Mr. Smith being very good with working with some of our advocates and our special needs community partners. And that was a skill that uh, I remember and that we need today. And then he loves our San Bernardino City Unified School District community board, Mr. Patrick Smith. Oops. Hey. Here we go. Good evening, board president Tillman, Madam Vice President Sabios, members of the board, Superintendent Ariana, cabinet, student board members. What's up, guys? <laughs> Everybody else who's, who's still here. Um, I initially didn't want this to become something like an Oscars acceptance speech, uh, but reflecting on it, it's important for me to recognize those who have had an impact on my journey as an educator, so I'm going to do it anyway. Um, plus, sometimes I kind of like to do what I want, so here we go. <laughs> um, I want to start by thanking my family for their support and patience with me. Um, my wife, Lucia, is here in attendance with me. She was able to be here. Unfortunately, my son and my daughter are at work and at school, so um, they couldn't make it. Um, I'd like to thank the uh, interview panel who could have selected any of the other handful of candidates, but decided I was the best fit to lead the work despite an interview that was far from my best. It was, it was terrible, it was bad. Um, I'd like to thank my mentors, 
those who encouraged me and those who inspired me who are no longer in the district. Uh, Pat Daniels, Mamie Holmes, Trish Robertson, Shelley Walsh, Chris Leroy, Ross Mack, Jim Ferranti, David Juarez, and Barbie Castro, and those still in the district, Jackie Willis, Dr. Rubio, Alejandro Hernandez, um, the data and compliance team, Toby, Olivia, Adriana, Tim, Janina, um, our foster member, Delia back here also, um, and the entire special education department staff, both at the Wall Building and at other locations. They've all played a role in enabling me to be able to serve our students and our community. And without just one of them, it's possible this opportunity may not have come to fruition. I'd like to th thank Dr. Lundy, Special Ed Department and SELPA Director for always supporting me. When she first took over the department, she heard about my background with data. So she asked me what I thought about interviewing for a new data compliance program specialist position that she was creating. And honestly, my response was a quick no. Um, she, was supported, she supported me in that, uh, in that response though. Um, as I had time to think about it and ultimately change my mind, she continued to support. Now through her continued support, we have a great team in place that has implemented some highly effective symptom, uh, systems and processes to lay the foundation for even greater things to come as it relates to data and compliance and ultimately student success. I also appreciate how she, she lifts my team's morale at times when she comes by our area to check with us and out of nowhere she'll do a little song and dance in the hallway. Um, my team will never get that from me, so that's a nice change of pace. <laughs> Um, my goals while in the position will be first and foremost to continue to find ways to make a positive impact for students, even if indirectly creating and refining systems in order to enable our teachers to do what they do best, which is to teach and develop all students to be their best selves. Second, I want to help the district and SELPA to gain independence from state oversight and compliance monitoring in order for us to be able to increase and focus our resources on what we all signed up for, which is what is good for students and student success. I often say I love my job. I love what I do. It is true. But there's more to it than that. People who know me well know that I'm a proud Dino boy. I was born in St. Bernardine's Hospital and raised in this community. I attended Lincoln and Belvedere Elementary Schools, Curtis Middle School, Pacific High School, class of 1997. I've dedicated my entire 20 year educational career to this community. Never thought twice about going anywhere else. Um, Superintendent Ariano, I was uh, at that meeting today that you spoke at. Um, and a message that you gave about being proud to say you're from San Bernardino absolutely resonated with me. I was thinking about it the whole day. Um, so from now on, and I, there's no kids in the room, so so from now on, when people ask me if I'm from Ladino, you're damn right. When they ask if I'm happy with my career up to this point, servicing students and community of San Bernardino, you're damn right. And if they ask me if I'm excited to be <clears throat> able to take on a larger capacity and responsibility in this new role, and have an even greater impact on the students and community of San Bernardino. You're damn right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith, and welcome aboard. Please don't use the other profanity that Mr. Ariano uses. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. It hits different. <laughs> Welcome aboard. I also was born at St. Bernardine, so we got something in common there. Next up is item number, we're gonna table 7.2, and then item 7.3. Sir, I would like to pull item um, within 7.3, student number 410770. Uh, any other changes? Do I pull uh, mine now as well? We're going to make an amendment to uh, recommendation. Yes. Yes. So we also want to uh, amend four four seven five three one from a one year expulsion to a one semester expulsion. Can entertain a motion, please. Move. Second. Ms. Uh, moved by Ms. Sabios and second by uh, Ms. Medina. Vote, please. Oh, hold up, Ms. Huston. I just want to clarify. I, I believe I heard earlier that it was going to be a one semester um, expulsion, one semester suspended expulsion. Exactly. And I just wanted to make sure that that was. That's what it is. What, okay. Yes. Just wanted it on the record. On the record. That's the amendment.
Motion passed. 7.4, petition to expunge, rescind, seal, record, or modify youth court or expulsion. A motion, please. Moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Husky, second by Ms. Medina. Vote, please. Seven point five recommended for suspension or expulsion, excluding mandatory offenses, but remanded to youth court for other means of correction. Moved. Second. Okay. Moved by Mrs. Alexander and second by Mr. Biles. Vote please. Motion carried. Other closed session action be resolved. The Board of Education accepts the notice of recommendation for disciplinary action and statement of charges to suspend without pay for three days. The following classified employees from his, her employment with the district, HR class 23-24-09 ER, HR class 23-24-10 ER. Moved. Moved by Mr. Bios. Second. Second by Mrs. Alexander. Vote, please. Item passes. Section eight, student board members, 8.1, report by board members. I want to start with Mr. Antonio Hernandez Nunez. Good evening. My name is Antonio Hernandez. I'm a senior at Royal Valley. And I want to mention a couple of things. Um, first of them being Today we started, um, uh, I'm pretty sure at every school site or high school, high school uh, campus, we started CAFS testing and for English and test and math for the juniors. And even though I'm not testing this year, uh, my teachers and classmates still make the experience like enjoyable. And I want to wish, I want to wish all the juniors a good luck and like do well on your on your cast test and i also want to give a huge shout out to one of our student board members savannah vasquez because she did get a step to harvard so congrats to savannah so yeah just got <laughs> yeah um i hope i hope everything goes well for her and i hope she does like i hope she succeeds Right. And one last thing is we're about to, um, we're coming to an end. Uh, we're, the school year is coming to an end. And I started thinking about when I first entered senior year and how I thought it wasn't going to go fast. But now that we're in April, I just, I'm just like honestly perplexed that. I made it this far. I wasn't. I'm. I didn't think I would be at this spot that I am right now. Um, if I were to to like speak to my freshman year self, and I'm just really grateful for everything that has happened, and that got me to this place. And I'm really excited and nervous that we're. I'm about to graduate. So.
Uh, Mr. Hernandez Nunez, your um, your progress in being comfortable with public speaking is just amazing. Mm -hmm. I remember your first time speaking and uh, your apprehension about it, but I can tell you have embraced it and you are the man now. <laughs> Great job. And now Miss Anjanette Rosenblum. Hello, my name is Anjanette Rosenblum and I attend Pacific High School and I'm a junior. I would like to mention a few things that currently have happened that affected me and my school. I wanted to um, give a shout out to Solana for getting accepted to Harvard. And then I wanted to also um, say that I am doing a pride um, community uh, for schools. And for those who don't feel like that they can come out to like family and friends, but they have a support team behind them. I would also like to thank everybody on the board and uh, in Slack for my personal challenges at home and at school, because without without hope nor support, I wouldn't be here going, uh, being able to get this far and not being able to believe that I can do what I can. And now that I can see with better eyes that I can move on and I can get myself together. So I would also, I would like to thank everybody that is sitting here tonight for your help even if it feels like you guys didn't do nothing at all. So thank you. <laughs> and um, yeah, so pretty much thank you. And I hope you guys have a good night. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Rosenblum. You always do such a good job. And trust me, you are helping many people that hear your words. Um, the strength and courage you have uh, just to put it out there and let folks know that... Um, uh, you you're going through things, but you are able to overcome them. You you give people the strength and the encouragement to overcome their daily trials too. You know I tell you all the time, everybody got a problem. Most folks don't talk about them, but the folks that talk about them help a lot of people. So thank you. And that brings us to. Uh, Section 9, 8.10, board discussion. I'm going to leave on 9.1 because it, uh, it's a conflict of interest. My uh, wife is actually the president of Lynx Incorporated, so I'm going to walk out. I'm also going to leave. I'm trying to remember. I'll entertain a motion. Oh, so, hey, it's my first time here on the mic. <laughs> Super excited. Um, so I'll ent entertain a motion at this time. Um, I would like to move the um, silver sponsorship at $5,000 for the Link Scholarship Breakfast. Um, they've honored our kids for many years, and our, our kids really benefit from this. A second. Oh, a quick question. Um, have we, so we've, spon we've, uh, we've sponsored before, and what was the amounts that we've sponsored in the past? We have in the past sponsored per uh, student. So any student that was getting a scholarship, we gave 1250 each. So it varied depending on how many students from the district. 1250 each. And this year, are we um, sponsoring how many students? Or is this just a whole? We don't even know how many yet. She said um, there was like four to six applicants, but they hadn't been chosen yet. So we don't know how many from our district. OK, and this is consistent then what we've done in the past. Yeah, we don't usually do just a flat out 5,000, but since we don't know how many students are going to be doing it, it's probably equivalent. The reason why I mentioned that is because I just want to make sure that we're, you know, as we're doing this, I feel like we're receiving more, um, you know, promotions for those, you know, create a flyer or so forth. So as long as it's been something that we've done historically, which I appreciate you getting that out, and I definitely would support it. Any other discussion? No. Okay, so we have a motion and then a. Who was the motion second? It was, the motion was Mickey and then second was 
uh, Dr. Wyatt. So let's vote. Ms. Chahuski, you want to just do verbal? Motion carries. Section 10, action items, 10.1, personal report. As presented. So move. Second. Moved by Dr. White, second by Ms. Medina. Vote, please. Motion carried. 10.2, approval of the multi-year vision 2030 plan. Moved. Second. You know, um, I, I do want to say, and I know uh, Mr. Ariana knows this, but you know, um, the, the thing of shine, uh, I think it's a, a great thing. Because I love things that shine. I like to shine my car and I like shiny rings and jewelry. But uh, in order to make things shine, it requires work. And, and, and people are going to always question us when we say that the district is shining because they're going to point out the areas that, that need some elbow grease. And I think we should accept that challenge. So we are proclaiming that the district shines. And if you find flaws, report them to us. And we want to do the work to make sure all areas uh, shine. So I, I think it's great, but we need to make sure we accept that responsibility that it's going to be a lot of work required to make our theme of shining totally legitimate. And I really think it is. I mean, when you hear about our student board member um, going to Harvard, there are so many stars in our district that do shine and never get talked about. And it's more of a stereotype than anything because it, you can go throughout the district and just find success everywhere. And to the extent that you could bring the average person to a, any of our schools and they wouldn't believe what they see in terms of uh, academic success, talent in every area, music, uh, art, uh, sports, um, um, the sciences. Our, our students are truly amazing. You know, because you visit the sites. And I, I have to even check myself because I can't tell you how many programs I've been to and just be like, wow, this is unbelievable. You know, these are our students. And I'm talking about even uh, all our sites, the sites that will be considered, uh, you wouldn't expect to go to a continuation school and find all the things that are going on there. And we get the awards for it. Uh, but so many of our uh, district employees put in the work 
to make so many kids uh, successful. And, and I, people ask me why I continue to do the work because in the end you're saving lives. And the schools are one place where you can empower a student that is living in adject poverty and chaos. But by getting that education, they can change their life and live whatever lifestyle they ever dream about. And that's the opportunity that we help facilitate. So I hope we uh, embrace the theme of shining and work hard to um, make the shine brighter than ever. Mr. Yarion, thank you. Dr. Wyatt. Thank you, Board President Tillman, and you know, great words about this plan and everything that we're moving forward on. Just uh, want to thank a lot of folks, starting with our superintendent, Mr. Ariano, our executive cabinet, our employees, our community, everyone that was a part of this, uh, developing this plan, our board, as well, our colleagues here on the board, and uh, just how excited I am about it. The one thing I know um, when Mr. Ariano came as superintendent, I, I really respected him for honoring the plan that was in place and the work that had been done. You know, he had uh, recognized that there was a tremendous amount of work that was done prior to him coming here, but well, he was excited and ready to build upon that. So I, I'm looking forward to launching this plan. Uh, you know, we align with the countywide vision as well in regards to live, work, and play. And uh, that's something I try to honor here in our city. And sometimes it's difficult because we just don't have some of the places that other cities have. And I'll say this again and again, that our district leads the way with transforming the city. It was great to see uh, Mayor Tran here, uh, County Board Supervisor Joe Baca Jr., um, Councilwoman Ibarra, and, and seeing that support. I know we had support from many other uh, local politicians, and it's gonna take that to move this city forward. But again, you know, your words today, Mr. Ariano, were inspiring because you talked about working together, having that continuity between city schools, and our city and our county and other uh, local officials building the city up because we need to do it. We definitely need to do it. We have great capacity here. Um, we have a number of outstanding venues right here in this city, but we lead the way. And I'm going to continue to say that because I take great pride in what we do. I want you to know that. And I really value the word pride. I do. And like uh, President Tillman said, we have uh, unbelievable students here. I've seen it since I was a young parent with young kids here. And then uh, as I grew here with Miss Medina, we watched our kids grow up together and just the talent and the caliber of students that we have, as well as our staff, the sky's the limit. Just hearing one of our students was accepted to Harvard. Wow. I was joking around with Miss Sabayle saying I got accepted to a Chafee Community College myself on my third try. But no, but just uh, we have kids here that are doing unbelievable things. And I always, I've said this since I've been on the board, I will put our kids up against anyone, any district, any time. And I will continue to say that I'm proud of this plan. I look forward to it happening, coming to fruition, and nothing but excellence coming out of San Francisco Unified School District. President Tillman, I fully heart, heartily uh, support this program as well. Thank you. Um, Ms. Shahasky? First, Mr. Ariano, thank you very much. Um, I think when the board hired you, you know, my hopes were for the passion and love that you have for our community to come back. Um, and pay off and you know as I sat through the presentation today I couldn't help but feel um, my own sense of pride um, for the work that we're doing and that we will do but also just for everything that being a San Bernardino kid means and um, I think you embody that you know um, 100 percent and sometimes we have to have those um, visible role models to aspire to. And I think you are uh, a very strong role model for all of our kids and for our community. And so I want to commend you for that. Um, I, 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 I want to thank the cabinet also for their presentation. Um, I loved how each of the letters matched their personalities, um, including the data. And uh, Desmond over there. Um, it was, you know, it was, it was really good. I, my favorite part though was the diverse community members that came forth and talked about their feeling of inclusion, um, a, a, a feeling apart and having so many different stakeholders, you know, from the mayor, from the, from Supervisor Baca, you know, from parents and, and, um, other community members and community leaders in the room. Um, it gives a, a, a new sense of hope, you know, um, and that there will be a lot of people that are, it won't just be us trying to 
put the shine on on SBC USD that there will be a lot of people that are invested in us and um, I, I you know the only thing I would want to say is I also hope that we can figure out how to include the city of Highland um, in you know helping SBC USD shine um, you know we've, we've got really good partnerships with the county and stuff and sometimes I wish I could see them um, participate a little more as we work through our schools um, that that do reside in the city of Highland and so I'm hoping that you know we can we can build that partnership as well. Um, but that's, you know, like today is a day of celebration and, you know, that's just part of the, of, of making SBC USD shine. So just thank you very much. Um, and thank you to the community members and everyone that participated in, in helping us write this because it's, it wasn't an easy task to write it and it's not gonna be an easy task. Um, but I think it's one that we're all willing to, you know, roll up our sleeves and, and do for our, you know, for our students and for our future students in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Husky. Mrs. Alexander? I agree with everything that my colleagues said and Superintendent Ariano. I remember when, you, when we first met and you pulled out the booklet that you um, created when you were in Redlands and you said, I want to do something just like that in San Bernardino. And I mean, if you don't have a vision, then it will perish. I mean, uh, Pastor Beckley said it. Many of the other speakers said it, and thank you for leading the charge because transformation is not easy. And I don't know if it's necessary transformation that we're doing, it's an enhancement to what we had. And I appreciate you and your intentional leadership and also the cabinet. Um, everybody got up there, while it was your personality, it also was in alignment with what you do as a leader. And I, it, you had many of your staff members out there. so. People are looking at us. They're looking at just the passion that was uh, exhibited, also the intentional leadership that was displayed, and we had fun at it. Um, the presentation um, was infectious, in, infectious in terms of how you presented it, what you shared, and it just made us made me be proud of being in San Bernardino because I don't like for people when they say, "Oh yeah, you live in San Bernardino." I mean, it's a beautiful place, and if anything, it's just going to resonate not only with our scholars, but with our community. We did have community leaders here today. Um, so that shows collaboration, but most importantly, it's just taking us to another level and uh, just being that change that we feel that others should see. Uh, I don't wanna quote Mahatma Gandhi, so I just, <laughs> just I, I feel like it's great. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for the presentation today. And then yes, do we have work to do, but we have to start somewhere. Thank you, uh, Ms. Alexander. Uh, Ms. Ceballos. Thank you. Um, I also want to uh, kind of share, um, you know, obviously a lot of what has already been shared. I, I um, share the same sentiment. Um, but I, I, I want to also add a couple of things that I guess stood out for me. I also felt a tremendous, a tremendous sense of pride, um, you know, just seeing the community come together, um, you know, and really just kind of, you know, injecting this, this energy into um, what, what we want to do and what we want to see come out of this. Um, just again, does, you know, just provide me with a lot of uh, just positive positivity, and just positive emotions in terms of like, uh, like Mickey said, a, a, a new sense of hope of, you know, we can do this, especially after the last um, several years, you know, rough uh, several years coming after COVID and all, you know, all of that stuff. It just kind of feels like, okay, we can turn a page and, you know, move forward and build upon the things that, you know, had already been um, set in motion for us. A couple of things that I, that I heard there that I really liked is, you know, shared ownership. I think, um, you know, together alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much more. And I think, um, you know, really involving those, you know, uh, community um, partnerships and, you know, members and, you know, with the support of the city, the mayor coming out, council um, woman Ibarra, like uh, um, Scott said, and then, you know, also uh, Joe Baca, Supervisor Baca, um, just really provides that 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 enthusiasm for me um accountability was another you know word that you had mentioned that really again you know is 
is is a term that really resonates you know we hold each other accountable and accountability doesn't mean negativity a lot of times you know when that term gets thrown out there it's associated to like negative thing. no we polish polish each other right we keep each other in check in terms of the things that we should be doing and if we don't do it for each other then who does it right and, and it's all from a good place coming of just trying to better the work that we do um, and elevate you know the the work that we do and then and then I really, really liked the values portion of it um, and the fact that you selected human potential and pride, you know, um, in their positions uh, of it, because I am a true believer that no student is a, a waste or or you know that doesn't lack like every student has the potential and like you said we have to find that potential every student every life you know matters and it's up to us to see the value in it and really elevate it so i really really appreciate that um you you know pointing that out and and, and talking about that and then you also said kindness which is also another thing that's really important to me. And I know it's really important to a couple of our board members, especially um, uh, Mary Ellen. Um, we wanna make sure that you're right in a world that, that you know, sometimes feels like it's falling apart, that we do you know, show kindness and that we remember that a lot of times I didn't used to, a lot of times I, I had, um, a hard time understanding why governmental offices or gov governmental um, places were just so lifeless sometimes in their customer service. Um, I really, you know, sometimes don't understand it till this day. And maybe it's because of the repetitious kind of work that we do. And maybe because, you know, sometimes we have a sense of job security, whereas, you know, maybe private institutions, there's there's more emphasis on that customer service piece, but we, we tend to forget that we are here providing a service, providing a service for students and providing a service for families. And just to constantly be reminded, you know, we are here to serve and we need to do it, you know, with a, with a happy heart um, and pride. I want to share a little um, incident that happened to me not so long ago. I was actually down here in San Bernardino for a training over at the um, uh, um, hotel by hospitality, uh, Doubletree. Thank you, the Double Tree, and um, it was a training that my district where I work from had sent us to, and it was a training for a lot of different people from different organizations, not just schools, um, and from all over the cities. There's people coming from, you know, Palm Desert and, you know, um, Anaheim and different places like that, right? And so here we're having this training almost at the heart of the city, right? And some people started making some comments about like the city, right? And like, you know, not super great comments. And I remember sitting there and thinking like, as they were making comments, um, I sat there and I was like, um, no, there, there's a lot of great people here. I live here. <laughs> so, um, you know, going back to that sense of joy, sense of pride, I don't know that, you know, years from that date, I would have spoken up and said something like that. So again, really um, developing that pride in our city and in, you know, in our students to say, you know, we do have great people here. We have great programs um, and to feel just that sense of pride to belong. I think um, just providing that message across the district uh, is going to that within itself and infecting with uh, injecting it with that positivity can can do great things just that alone so again thank you so much for everything that you do and um thank you to cabinet as well i think again that speaks to ownership owned um, shared ownership you guys coming up and each of you presenting your own you know departments that you kind of oversee um instead of just the superintendents you know sitting up there and talking it really just you know, brings that whole piece together. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Bias. Ms. Medina? Yes, no, I too, I too want to say that I was very pleased. I was um, ecstatic. I, was, I felt the emotions of being that person, the parent that wanted the best for their children and knowing that we um, we have been heading in that direction. And, and I did love what Dr. Funch has mentioned about equity and how our district has been 
uh, you know, ahead of the game when it comes to other areas wanting to dismantle equity, wanting to dismantle, um, you know, student rights or or so forth. And we we pushed against it and we brought it. If they were taking it away, we're going to bring it here because we understand that this is what's needed for our students. And so I'm really proud of our district and I'm proud of the work that we're doing. And I just love just the visual aspect. I know it was mentioned as well. Landscape, looking at our schools, being prideful of, of where we're, we're sending our kids to. And just being in the board meeting and just feeling that joy, the design. So I also want to say thank you to our communications team as well for providing all of this beautiful. Uh, it, it does bring that visual aspect to it. Like, you know, we're greatness, uh, something of greatness. So I, I, I want to thank everyone that spoke, um, those presentations, I mean, it, it created humor, it, it drew, drew people in that, that were in the audience, and I imagine those that are watching it online as well. So thank you so much, and I'm really excited. Thank you, Ms. Medina. And, um, you know, sometimes I forget the, um, the fact that Mr. Ariano uh, is from San Bernardino, born and raised, and uh, has spent time in the community. And he's about to say a few words, and he's looking so slow, so I gotta make him laugh. Uh, Ray Culberson told me that Mr. Ariano told him that he bought his suit from the rag man. <laughs> Y'all don't know who the rag man was. <laughs> There's a few of us do, so I want to make sure I put it on the record. <laughs> How do you tell Ray that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, first of all, just on um, board, on, on behalf of Cabinet and myself and everyone across the San Marino City Unified School District, we really appreciate your positivity, your words of support, and we feel you. We feel that you are behind us, and that's what makes our work uh, a lot easier to do. Uh, I also just want to publicly also thank just my cabinet. I've said, I, I don't want to say, I can't say this enough. I have a very good, great, wonderful, amazing cabinet. Uh, a lot of the ideas that you see in the core values in the um, document of Vision 2030 were ideas that came from the discussion of my colleagues. They are some very bright and creative people. And I also want to thank Mary Rowan and the communications department because the design of our product was important, not just the words. The design had to be important. And, and I believe uh, Mary Rowan and her group, you guys nailed it. This is a beautiful document that we're going to saturate the community with. So the last thing I will say, I'm going to reinforce what Mr. Tillman and others have said. Now it's time to do the work. Um, and we are working, the board, the cabinet and myself are working with our directors across the different departments of putting together an action plan. We're working with a very exclusive and well-known research company, Hanover Research, uh, that will be helping us uh, to create that plan and to monitor that plan and actually evaluate our progress. Uh, so it's a neutral third party coming in every year uh, so that we can be honest with ourselves, right? Sometimes it's hard to be honest with yourselves. So we're very excited. We're, we're, we're going to get the job done. And uh, as I've said before, our, my ultimate goal, our ultimate goal, is we want San Marino City Unified School District to be a destiny district, and we want the city of San Bernardino to be a city of destiny. So thank you all for your support and your kind words today. And moved and second. Vote, please. You say the motion and second again, please. Second. It was moved by Mr. Kuzinski and second by Ms. Alexander. Motion carried. 10.3, agreement between San Bernardino County and San Bernardino City Unified School District related to board discretionary fund, 1.3 million. I move. Second. It's been moved by uh, Dr. White and second by uh, Ms. Husky. Vote, please.
Ocean Carry 10.4 Resolution Adopting Goals and Policies for Community Facilities Districts. I move. Second. Moved by Dr. White and second by Ms. Ceballos. Roll, please. Motion carry 10.5. Approval of district's transportation plan 2024-2025. Move. Second. <laughs> Move by Mr. Husky, second by Dr. Wyatt. Vote, please. Motion carry 10.6, approval of the Career Technical Education Advisory Committee. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Alexander, second by Ms. Ceballos. Vote, please. I don't carry 10.7 compensation for a school board member. So moved. Second. So moved and second. Vote, please. Carried section 11, consent items. So moved. Second. So moved by Mr. Hussey, second by uh, Ms. Medina. Are any to pull? Yes, uh, President Tillman, we would like to pull item 11.4 today, please. I'll just table it? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, President Tillman, 11.39, 11.41 for me. I'll be abstaining their contracts with county offices. 11.39 uh, and 11.41. I'll just be abstaining. Right. Other than those, vote please. Motion carried 11.39, ratification of amendment number one to the agreement with San Bernardino County Superintendent of Schools, Quality Start San Bernardino. So moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Medina, second by Ms. Alexander. Vote please. I don't these uh anytime it's it's an item with uh, legal
That went through, it's just not showing up. 7.41, ratification of the renewal agreement with San Bernardino County Superintendent of Schools, QCC Workforce Plat Pathways Grant, no cost, student services. I moved. Moved by Ms. Ceballos. Second. Second by Mrs. Alexander, vote please. No, well, it saved. It went through. Thank you. And that brings us to section 12, reports, comments by union organizations, 12.1, San Bernardino Teachers Association. And I'm sure Ms. Akala has said all she wants to say tonight. Yes. Uh, California School Employees Association. No report. Communication Workers of America. No report. And San Bernardino School Police Officers Association. And no report. Section 13, mandated policy revisions, approval of board policy, uh, 514152. Entertain a motion? Move. Moved by Dr. Wyatt. Second, Second by Mr. Byers. Vote, please. President Tillman, I just set up the wrong one. I did the second one. I just did the approval for board bylaw 9010. So give me a minute to switch it back. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to do a verbal on that. I can't get it to come up. The one that we did, okay, let's do. 13.1. Um, okay, 13.1, we did a, uh, this is, so it's been uh, moved in a second. I want to take a verbal vote on 13.1, board members. So all those in favor of 13.1, say aye. 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 Any opposed? That one passed. Uh, section 14. Board policies and bylaws, 14.1 approval of board bylaw 9010 public statements. We're moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Medina, second by Ms. Alexander. Let's do a verbal vote. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We'll do 14.2 approval of board bylaw 9120 officers and auxiliary personnel. It's been moved by Mrs. Alexander and second by Ms. Medina. Do a verbal vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Section 15, 15.1. Uh, reports and comments. Board members will start with uh, Mr. Husky. Thank you and good evening, everyone. Um, first, I just want to tell you how much I've enjoyed working with our student board members uh, this year. I can't believe we're almost to the end of the year. Next month, they'll be We'll have five that are graduating, um, and I'm going to miss them very much. I've had the honor of working with Silvana for a couple of years, and um, 
I'm not surprised that she was mm. accepted into Harvard because I could see her being our our president one day. Um, she's she's <laughs> just that driven, and you know um, we'll be very lucky because she will definitely get this uh, everybody together and moving in one direction. So I'm very excited for her. Um, you know, as we um, Miss Alcala earlier talked about school libraries. Um, week and um, you know I, I, I want to thank this board for always honoring school libraries and making sure that we have librarians I that you know our libraries have been under attack and I'm really proud of the work that we're doing to make sure that our kids have access to um, to literature and that we have uh, certificated librarians who are experienced and knowledgeable and can help our students um, navigate um, appropriate texts um, I loved the honor choir tonight. I was in tears um, once upon a time, a very long time ago. I was in the San Bernardino City Honor Choir, and I remember as I was listening to them sing, I can remember being in like fifth and sixth grade and um, under the direction of Mr. Alan Lindgren, and who is our assistant superintendent of fine arts at the time. We had an assistant superintendent level position for fine arts. Um, so I always am thrilled to see our um, commitment to VAPA. And those kids tonight were just they're just so adorable. It just made me smile. Um, uh, you know, on a, on a more somber note, um, this is always a hard time as we um, remember uh, North Park um, and uh, the loss of our teacher and our student. Um, and um, sorry, I just got lost for words there because um, it's just, I know it's still hard in, on, on so many people. And, um, I appreciate um, Ms. Alcala for also bringing that up tonight and, and, you know, just continuing to honor their memory and making sure that we never forget. Um, I also would like to um, announce um, I attended the San Bernardino County School Boards Association meeting, and at that meeting, they, amongst other things, they um, announced the Spring Awards, um, which will be April 29th, and we have an award winner in Pure Land Foundation, so congratulations to them. I look forward to being there. and honoring them for the work that they do and their commitment and support that they've had for our students in our district for some time now. So um, that's really exciting. Um, the last thing that I um, wanted to talk about is something that came up in our, um, in the SHINE document. And um, we won a golden bell a while back for our undercover anti-bullying teams. And it is that and our restorative conflict mediation is something that is cutting edge, effective, uh, an amazing program that we do for school safety and restorative practices for our kids. But we only have three folks in positive youth development plus an intern trying to uh, both provide intervention and training and support for 70 plus schools. Um, that's a lot, I know, because once upon a time I was one of those three. And, um, you know, as, as we've heard different folks coming forward, um, you know, talking about um, the program and, and their students, you know, being referred for the program and sometimes the weight that they have to get in the program because we have three people for 70 schools. Um, I really want to see us um, raise our capacity um, and, you know, really figure out how we can help more schools become self-sufficient in, um, you know, providing the intervention, both the undercover anti-bullying teams and the restorative conflict mediation. I know that if we can get involved and do those very effective, that method of conflict mediation, not just any conflict mediation, but that method of it, that we will see a reduction in fights, we will see a reduction in student harm, we will see a reduction in suspensions and expulsions, um, but we just need to continue to build capacity. And it isn't possible for them to be interventionists and training and support for our school counselors and our school administrators. So I'm just hoping that we can figure out how we can, you know, um, assess um, who's able to do um, those programs on their own, both UABT and restorative conflict mediation, which are in progress. And, and you know, if we have some that need a little bit more encouragement um, to implement, because it's, I know it's, um, you know, it's a lot to feel uh, competent in, in, the, in that process, but it is something that I think we can all do. Um, and I know that, like, I'm very well versed in the two that I know my time's up, but I'm very versed in the two, but I'm hoping that we could get a presentation. I could get um, 
some consensus to get a presentation so that all the board understands just how wonderful those two programs are and what our parents and staff are talking about when they bring those two items up. So if we could get consensus. Yeah, consensus. Right we'll do that. Thank you, Mr. Husky. Dr. Wyatt. I'll try to keep it brief. Just uh, today, if you don't know, is World Autism Awareness Day. And so I want to make sure we acknowledge that. Uh, I know there's a lot of us that really strong support our students with disabilities, our programs, our staff, and our families, our students. And you know, so it's an important day to acknowledge and just to, to bring more awareness to. You know, I actually have a lot to say, but I'm, I'm not getting to see. And I just want to say um, that I'm very fortunate to have quite a, a few amazing folks around me. And I am very thankful for that and the support and best wishes and blessings and everything else that I've had in the last couple of weeks. You know, a lot of you know I had a, a life-changing event and uh, it's just amazing to have such a great support crew around you. Family, friends, colleagues, you name it. And uh, for that, I just want to tell everybody that's been involved in that, and a lot of folks in this room, thank you. And that's it. Thank you, Dr. White. Mr. Ceballos. I'll try to be brief as well. Um, I did want to say, um, give a, a special thank you to um, Belvedere um, elementary, Miss uh, Charlotte Gonzalez, uh, who's the librarian actually over there. Uh, she had, um, it was Read Across America a couple weeks ago, and um, she was one of the schools that I had signed up for, and it was just a really, really wonderful experience um, for me. Uh, it was actually my first time um, attending, and the the school just welcomed me with really, really nice, positive, um, just you know, open arms. And I really appreciate that special shout out to VP Treg Painter um, and then Principal Erica Reels over there as well. Um, you know, hope to come back soon and to other elementaries and other schools um, for, for these type of events. I really enjoyed it. Um, I also want to say congratulations to Savannah um, making us proud um, and can't, can't wait to, to see her become our first woman president. <laughs> um, and then I do want to also second um, uh, the comments that were made by uh, Ms. Chahusky in terms of the mediation and anti-bully or undercover teams. They really, really are phenomenal um, phenomenal uh, interventions and phenomenal programs, but they do require a specific level of skill to be able to perform them um, and they do require uh, time to invest in them. I actually had the fortune to when I was doing my practicum and my internship um, part of part of those hours to be part of um, they so graciously took me in and and I was able to kind of write alongside them and really see the magic happen before my eyes really really magical and transformational just um the the turnaround that you see in the students um and and, and the science that goes behind the intervention it is truly phenomenal um obviously i don't want to go into the details of it right because uh, um a presentation would be great. A presentation and also supporting, um, again, the capacity, not only at the district level, but also I do remember that when I was, you know, involved, um, you know, shadow, shadowing, um, it, it requires... It requires a lot of constant feedback to like new counselors. So if we wanted to build the capacity for, for individual site counselors, it does require, you know, demonstration work side by side um, for them to be able to learn and then get instant feedback and correction. So that's why for a long time, I've really been supporting, you know, um, and, and, and advocating for these types of programs to build the capacity, but we need more than just presentations. We need more than just professional development in the sense of here's a PowerPoint, here's what you're supposed to be doing, you know, go, go get out there and do it. No, they, they need coaching, side-by-side -side training. So I hope, you know, that I've been annoying enough um, in that, in that sense, with those specific departments to make sure that there is more collaboration between wherever there needs to be. I keep saying special education, um, 
Swiss department and PYD uh, because there's some overlap in the kind of work that they do. Um, so I really hope that that's not ha has not been falling on deaf ears. Um, you know, as I wait patiently to hopefully hear that this upcoming summer, um, instead of having three different conferences, that we'll have some overlap and collaboration between those three departments as I've been bringing this up since the beginning of the year. So I really do hope to hear that that has um, and is, you know, taking effect. Um, other than that, thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Ceballos. Ms. Medina. Yes, um, I'm glad that also the, the North Park um, Elementary School was brought. Um, that was a, a very difficult time for the board members back then. I remember I was a VP and um, for the staff, for the children in the classrooms and and just witnessing firsthand being in the auditorium. And I know um, Danny, Mr. Tillman was there and Scott. Um, it, it was it was heart wrenching and knowing the fact that it could have been your child um, and not knowing what was happening all of that and and uh, I was very proud that our district did provide um, um, counseling and making sure that it was anybody that was being um, even us board members you know impacted by it and then uh, you know some of us witnessing when I had to translate you know some of the children that were in that same classroom and and the you know the parents reuniting with them it's just really difficult so I'm glad that um, and I don't know if we had I believe we did have a resolution did we the last board meeting um, in, in recognizing, and I don't know if maybe we could do something on social media just to, um, that we do uh, remember and, um, you know, send prayers to, um, to the families as well and all the students that were there. Um, I do want to um, kind of piggyback with um, um, Felicia when she requested that we do a career pathway and A through G from the last time. So I want to have, I, did we do a consensus that one time that you requested it? No. So I would, re, I want to do a consensus request and making sure that it's on the agenda. Um, and this is going to be looking at all the career pathways just to get an update. Because we, I know I've, I've met with a community group and they asked me many questions that pertain to our current career pathways and also our A through G. And I know we've done a lot of work and sometimes even the community themselves don't know. Uh, some of them are new to the community and, and some of them, uh, having working in other school districts and I just want to highlight there's a lot of things we've been doing now are there things that we want to improve on maybe yes um, so I would like to have a presentation on that and so if I can have consensus from the board till we can get that update I think it's been a while I know there's going to there's some changes coming up um, when it comes to the different career pathways um, but it's just to see, show those that are watching from home what are we doing when it comes to that so um, Certainly, uh, we'll put a presentation together specifically so I capture exactly what you need. Uh, when you say a report on A through G, you want to give well, me some specifics. So I know in my sense, I, I want to look at um, how many students are participating, how many students are um, uh, actually meeting the requirements. And, you know, I think we were at one point, um, was it 29? I can't remember what the 39. So I, I wonder what where we're at right now. And then also looking at um, areas of improvement, if maybe we can look at um, areas of improving certain areas, yeah, when it comes to our students in those. And I don't know if you wanted to piggyback on that one, take advantage of my minute. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just to further support, it's just a matter of just making sure that we're preparing our scholars from, um, because some of the pathway programs filter into elementary schools as well as middle schools. So how do they feed into each other for those particular pathway programs? And then ultimately, are we making sure, one, we're communicating to all of the scholars that they have that opportunity and how are we communicating it and then encouraging them to participate in those programs? Yeah, go ahead. Cool. What? Okay. But here's, the, here's the problem. You, we can't discuss an item that's not agendized. Oh, you guys, are, hold on. You guys are making reports. 
But we can't just do an improv meeting and start discussing a specific item. It was just to make a request that that's what I would like to see on the next. Right, I got that. right. And, it, and it was a follow up to my request last time and it wasn't on the agenda. Right, but so. we can't do a coordinated. Got it. I want to. Mm -hmm. Okay. No problem. You can finish okay. with your report, Miss. Okay. And then I'll, I'll just uh, finish really quickly. Um, I, I was really glad that I had, there was Mari Ma Carmen that came down as well as Angie when it came to the Walking with Community series. And I think when they approached me, uh, Mari Carmen approached me was because we've had several parents um, who have passed away um, in the school district and um, due to cancer, not to say that it's related to this, but um, it's just to highlight the environmental impacts that, are, that is really happening in our area here. So they do have those community, um, community walks. Um, if you'd like to join, you can also follow Peace Edge, which is uh, the People's Collective for Envi Environmental Justice. They're on social media as well. And um, they also have a QR code. And um, I don't know how I would pull that. But... Yeah, so um, there's, anyway, so I'll try to sh see if we can have it shared as well uh, for those that like to attend. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Medina. Ms. Alexander? Sure, thank you. I'm sorry for stepping out of order. No, no, no. <laughs> um, so I just also wanted to highlight um, our students that came out, the choir, the honors choir. They did a great job, and, um, and they were on cue, and their song was in alignment with our theme. And I had asked the superintendent, I was like, did you know they were going to sing that song? So I thought that was great. It was a great start. Um, also, congratulations to Savannah for getting accepted to Harvard. But congratulations to all of our scholars, because I think now um, our seniors are finding out about the colleges that they've been accepted to. And I think it's just amazing um, the number of students that I'm seeing on social media that are in our district that are going on to furthering their education. Um, the community college level as well as a four-year institution. I think that's awesome. Um, this past weekend, I attended the Social Lights Battalion, and um, our our sponsorship went for well use because they were able to uh, distribute approximately about fifty thousand dollars to the seven gentlemen that were in the battalion. So thank you all for your support. I know that there were individual support, superintendent, but we also support it as a district. And I thought that was amazing. I wanna highlight the seven gentlemen that were um, in the battalion. We had two from um, San Bernardino. I'll first start off with um, just in order to how I see him here. Solomon Moore, who was actually crowned our um, Sir Knight, and a Sir Knight is the winner. And he walked away with a significant amount of money um, as a result of being the winner. Uh, but every one of the contestants or knights actually walked away with a computer. They all walked away with money. And um, they walked away with a travel voucher. So that's pretty significant. Um, Ali Duprales, who is also one of the knights. Daniel Perez, who is um, a scholar at Cajon High School. And he's also an honor student. Um, Daniel, Daniel and Solomon both received the highest honors in terms of their GPA. And um, definitely worth recognizing that because they're very, all of them are hard workers, but these two young men, their GPA was um, 3.8 and above. Uh, and then Dar Darvion McGee, who's also a scholar, he goes to Powell Charter Academy, and Frank Cox, Sincere Brackett and Destin Maurice. All of these gentlemen were high achieving young men. And again, like I said, um, the amount of money that was awarded was approximately $50,000. So we also had Crystal Scott, our student board member who was a fair maiden. So she was one of the um, escorts for one of the, the, the nights. And she was absolutely beautiful and her right leader did a great job. So it was a great experience. I think for all these kids, it's a leadership development opportunity for them. And it was for six months. So now they're on their way to Sacramento in a couple weeks. And they're going to um, be able to meet some of our legislators there. So moving on, I also wanted to uh, highlight our hiring event that's coming up and to uh, just acknowledge uh, that Assistant Superintendent Funches and your, your staff and great job. I got, I actually, as a taxpaying citizen in San Bernardino, received a card and I have shared it. Uh, but I also want to just highlight the fact that when we talk about equity, uh, 
I did receive some numbers from you, and I know that we are intentionally making sure, one, we are growing in the space of just our male teachers, uh, focusing on African Americans and uh, Latin Americans, uh, stu staff members, starting with teachers, and um, really appreciate that. And it's also in alignment from what I understand, there was a, some type of symposium at Cal State San Bernardino uh, last week where um, there was a focus on that. So just wanted to make sure that you get that acknowledgement as um, a district, but keep doing what we should be doing. And that's just growing our base and our, um, just our hiring practices. Moving on, I would like to see if we can agendize the Blue Foundation. The last meeting we had about six students that presented on um, the, a leadership conference that they're going to Cal State San Diego, San Diego State. And um, I would like to see if we can agendize that for sponsorship for our next meeting. So I need to get consensus on that. That might be something that does have to come to the, uh, have to be agendized. I know, uh, yeah, so Mr. Yonel said that it's supporting already. And that's not like it's a um, supporting a community event. These are actually students going to a program. There's a process in place to do that. So he can handle that. Oh. Okay. So you'll talk about it later? You can give an update in the board. Talk about it later. Oh, okay. Just making sure. I didn't know because they sent us an email as well. Um, then I wanted to talk about the Math Excellence Program. I did attend that a couple weeks ago, the first day, and um, definitely it was a good day. And I know we have probably two more sessions, but we had a parent come here today talking about, um, I guess, the inequities of, you know, uh, Parent Square and how some parents are aware of certain programs and others, but there was a criteria for the math excellence program, and it was only for a certain group or a certain grade level. And I'm just wondering if this is an opportunity to educate uh, the parents on Parent Square and to make sure they're looking at the specifics and the details. So can we somehow um, in our next meeting just explain the communication process and what we're doing, um, communicating with parents, and also making sure that if it's a communication that's done at the site level or the school level, that we're doing it right, or the you know, I guess the principal is doing it accordingly is is equitable. So, is there a way to make sure one, we come back, explain how we communicate, and also making sure that the parents understand that they need to look at the specifics? Because I was a little concerned when she said something about math excellence because there were criteria based on that particular program. So, I like to just agendize that we come back and we explain the communication process of what we do with the parents. And I just, just want to be fair and open and honest. Tonight's a perfect example. We, we have like three requests to have things agendized. Usually we only put one item uh, other than what is on the agenda there, only because if we don't, we'll be going in the meetings till 12 o'clock, but we will prioritize them and then get them agenda. Yeah, all right. We, but we hear you have consensus to do. Right. Thank you, Ms. And, and the last, I just want to wish the scholars good luck in their test. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much, Ms. Alexander. You know, I want to commend the choir that was here today. They did an excellent job, the honor choir. And when I was in high school, I played in the band. We had a hundred piece band and our band room was next to the choir room. And at that time, they had a huge choir, too. And we could cut through the band room to go into the auditorium, and there was a door for the choir room. But we wouldn't ever go in that choir room because there was a little lady in there who was the director of the choir. Her name was Miss Sylvia Chahusky. And we all knew you didn't mess with Miss Chahusky's room. <laughs> that was Mickey's mom. But she was a great choir director, but she did not play. It was just weird that we had this... I mean, as a ninth grader, you just knew, you don't go on that, Mr. Hussey don't play. Just just avoid her class. You can cut through everybody else's class, but you don't cut through Mr. Hussey's class. But the choir did do a great job today. I want to commend them on that. Um, Mr. Ariano. Thank you. Just one um, brief statement. It's such an exciting day that we've had today. I, I regret to inform that we did lose one of our employees uh, this last week, uh, Phyllis Ham Hammond who was the Secretary 3 of uh, the ETSA department. You may recall the last time we were together, I had featured a picture because she had sang a beautiful rendition of one of the Billie Holiday songs 
at the uh, Black History Celebration event that we had. And regretfully, a few days later, um, she had some medical complications and she's passed away. So Board President Tillman will be adding her name uh, to the board uh, agenda next next week uh, so that we can honor her at the closing. Thank you, President Tillman. Thank you. And that was that your report? Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. Uh, I agree. Uh, <laughs> sex, <laughs> section 16, uh, summary of board members' request. Good evening. The first request is from Ms. Chehesky and Ceballos. Um, they are requesting to raise and build capacity and figure how to provide training and support since the positive youth development department is short staffed. They would like to see consensus on a presence presentation for undercover anti-bullying and restorative conflict mediation, including what schools are fully implemented and what the needs are to get all schools to be able to conduct their own. Ms. Ceballos re restated her request on streamlining departments, trainings, so there are no different trainings occurring with different messages. Um, consensus was given tonight. Ms. Rosales Medina requesting a career pathways and A through G presentations specifically on how many students are participating and meeting the requirements, uh, the areas of improvement, how do they feed into each other in the pathways, and how are we communicating them out and encouraging them to participate? We need clarification if we have consensus for this. Yes. We have consensus for that one, I think, yeah. Ms. Alexander requests that we explain the communication process regarding Parent Square and make sure that sites are, that are using Parent Square are using it equitably. And that was it. Thank you. Thank you. Entertain a, mo a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Meeting adjourned.